Hello, hi, Nirupam Acharji in my channel. And uh, first thing first, a well informed person is more likely to survive longer, as we all know, and have a better quality of life than uninformed ones. An appellate day may no more keep a doctor away. So, fundamental basic knowledge about your health, about the health facilities nowadays is imperative. And the whole purpose of my channel is to provide those basic information to the human beings for remaining aware about their health status, health condition, and their well being. Okay, coming to today's topic stroke. Now, this is a very familiar term actually. Everybody, all the people knows about the term stroke, but what is the inner meaning and how it happens? Many people think in fact stroke happens in the heart. Factually, it happens in the brain. It is not with the heart, but it's with the brain. And a stroke is always a medical emergency. It happens when a blood vessel in the brain bursts or more commonly, when a blockage happens there. Without treatment, cells in the brain quickly begin to die. This can cause serious disabilities or even the final step that is death. If a loved one is therefore having any of the stroke symptoms, call the emergency right away. Now, what are the symptoms of stroke? Numbness or weakness of the body, especially on one side. Vision changes in one or both eyes. Trouble in swallowing. Severe headache with an unknown cause. Problems with dizziness, walking or balance. Confusion, trouble speaking or understanding others. Difficulty walking, including staggering or wearing. Coordination problem in the arms and hands. Slurred speech or inability to speak. Sudden deviation of the eyes toward one direction. Seizures. Irregular breathing. Stupor. Comma. Now, if these are the symptoms ever you come across in any one of your relatives, friends, or you know, people around you, or even you suspect for yourself, it's a symptom of stroke. So think fast. Fast stands for what? It stands for face dropping. Ask the patient for a smile. Does one side droop in his face? arm weakness or numbness speech can the person repeat a simple sentence do they have trouble or slur words time to call emergency don't delay so that is the first meaning how to go about with a patient having a stroke acting fast is key to stroke survival as i said if the face droops or there is weakness in the arms or there is a difficulty in speaking or in speech, it's time to call emergency. So if you suspect a stroke, be fast. Now be fast in itself is an abbreviation for understanding and managing a uh, stroke. B stands for balance. Does the person have a loss of balance? Watch it. Has the person lost vision in one or both eyes? Does the person's face look uneven? Can the person raise both arms for 10 seconds? Is the person's speech slurred? Time is brain, call emergency. Time equal to brain damage as far as stroke is concerned. Every second therefore counts. Without oxygen, brain cells begin dying within minutes. Once brain tissue has died, the body parts controlled by that area won't work right. This makes stroke a top cause of long-term disability. There are clot-busting drugs that can curb brain damage, and they must be given within a short time of the attack, usually within three hours or when symptom starts. Now, how the diagnosis goes about? 
diagnosis goes through imaging techniques like CT scan, MRI, or ultrasound. You may get other types of tests such as EKG that checks your heart's electrical activity and an EEG that checks your brain's electrical activity. Now, coming to <clears throat> one form of stroke that is ischemic stroke. Now, this is the most common type of stroke. Nearly 9 out of 10 fall in this category. An ischemic stroke happens when a blood clot blocks the supply of blood to or in the brain. The clot may start in that spot or travel through the blood from where elsewhere in the body. Clogged arteries are a top cause. Now, clogged arteries, maybe it appears to be or it sounds to be a little technical. So, in the layman language, if I can just elaborate on, you know, you we daily on a daily basis we use our tips and there is normal flow of water. But over a period of time, when a rust accumulates within the pipes or tape, the flow of water calms down. That is a common knowledge all of us we know. So with the accumulation of rust within the pipes or in the tape, the flow of water comes down. Similarly, in the exact manner, when there are blood accumulation or there are atherosclerosis or accumulation of flat cholesterol within the arteries, which narrows down the flow of the arteries diameter, then the flow of blood gets disturbed and over a period of time, that can lead to blockage. Now, there is a second type, hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic strokes happen when a weakened blood vessel in the brain actually bursts. The result is bleeding inside the brain that can be hard to stop. The most common cause is high blood pressure, which is a very common disease. Other causes include aneurysms or AVMs, that is arteriovenous malformations, which weaken blood vessel in the brain. Now then comes mini stroke, TIA, which stands for transient ischemic attack. Now transient ischemic attack, often called mini strokes, are also an emergency. When they happen, blood flow is temporarily hampered in part of the brain, causing stroke-like symptoms. When the blood flows again, the symptoms stop. You can't tell at the time if it's a stroke or a transient ischemic attack or TIA. Having a TIA is also a warning sign. So see your doctor if you think you have had one. Emergency treatments, what's there for ischemic strokes? The goal is to restore blood flow immediately. A clot busting medication called TPA is very good at dissolving clots and cutting the chance of long term damage, but, but it must be given in time, usually within three hours of the attack. Then what is the treatment emergency treatment for hemorrhagic strokes? These are harder to manage actually. Treatment usually involves trying to control high blood pressure, bleeding and brain swelling. Now, causes. What are the causes for ischemic strokes? Clogged arteries are a top cause. Now, as I explained, what is a clog, clogged artery, comparing it with a clogged tape or pipe in our toilet, bathrooms, wherever. Plaque made of fat, cholesterol, and other things builds up in the arteries. What is plaque? As I said, like, you know, when rust accumulates within the tape, and it actually hampers the flow of water. Similarly, plaque formation is there within our artery and plaque is formed with the accumulation of fat, cholesterol and other things that builds up in the arteries, causing plaques. Somewhere scientifically it is termed as atherosclerosis also. Leaving less space to or for blood to flow. Like when rust accumulates in pipes or tapes, there is less space for the water to flow disturbing the flow of water. Similarly, the same way, plaque actually leaves very less space for blood to flow in our arteries. A blood clot may lodge in these 
narrowed space and can cause ischemic stroke. All that plaques make it easier for a clot to form and can also rupture blocking blood flow. Hemorrhagic strokes, what can be the causes? This can happen if uncontrolled high blood pressure bursts and weakened arteries. Therefore, monitoring your blood pressure is very, very imperative and important. A risk factors. Your chance of having a stroke rises with age. As you age, the chances of having a stroke also rises. And if you have had a stroke or transient ischemic attack, TIA before, which I have explained in my earlier slides, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, which can lead to plaque formation, diabetes, obesity, sickle cell disease, smoking, heavy drinking, and not being active also raise your risk to have a stroke. Now, your food is also important. What's on your plate? Eating too much of fat and cholesterol can cause plaque to narrow arteries. Too much salt may lead to high blood pressure. Eating plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains and fish may help lower your stroke risk. Lowering your risk. Find out if you have any condition that you need to treat to help prevent a stroke. That may mean taking medicine and also boosting healthy habits from the foods you eat to being active and not smoking. It's never too late to start. Hope uh, the clarity regarding stroke has came to all of you. Now, these are very basic and fundamental knowledge. Otherwise, stroke is a very complicated disease to be treated and is best understood by your doctors and physicians how to manage it. But what I try to do is impart the basic fundamental knowledge to understand what are the symptoms and to help people who may have an attack of stroke in front of you. Basic knowledge is always good for to understand and to help a patient and to help yourself. Before I sign off, as usual, the laughter dose for today. By the way, have you subscribed to my channel? If not, kindly subscribe. That will be motivation. Thank you.